Rate hikes are hitting the Canadian real estate market hard, with consumer confidence falling drastically and buyer's remorse at an all-time high, with people trying to get out of their real estate contracts. And it seems to me that the biggest problem here is uncertainty. Uncertainty what's going to happen with interest rates, uncertainty with respect to what it means with higher payments and higher interest rates, and uncertainty with where the market is going. And the biggest cure for uncertainty is clarity, because clear buyers buy, and clear sellers sell, but confused buyers and sellers do nothing. And there's nothing worse for the Canadian real estate market than a whole bunch of people doing nothing. But before we get into all the details, do me that favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video. And don't forget, we're giving away $5,000 for a 25,000 subscriber giveaway. All you have to do to enter the draw to win $5,000 is go to 360giveaway.ca and hit the subscribe button. You get an extra entry if you follow me on Instagram and if you share the contest on social media. Again, it's 360giveaway.ca. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's discuss what's going on in the Canadian real estate market because consumer confidence is at an all-time low and that is largely to do with the number of people who bought in Vancouver and Ontario at ridiculously high prices and are now facing a potential correction and higher interest rates clear in the face and this is going to be a big problem for pretty much anybody who's bought in the last two years in those markets because even if you got that five-year fixed rate or you got that very good variable rate well, you're gonna have to face higher interest rates at some point and you need to be planning for it. And the number one thing you can do right now is figure out exactly what higher interest rates would mean to you. And here's what you have to expect. You have to expect that interest rates are going to go up by at least another percent over the next six to 10 months, and they could go up by up to 2%. And if they do go up by 2%, well, you need to figure out what, exactly what your payments would look like if they went up that much. And I'm gonna show you how to do that at the end of this video. But before we get into all that, I wanna show you the headlines and show you what's going on in the Canadian real estate market. This is the big headline right now, which is rate hikes hit Canadian housing with first price drop in two years. The bigger headline here and the more important piece is that sales are down by 12.6%. And this is what happens when you get into an economy and into a market that has uncertainty. Basically, people don't put their houses up for sale because they're already locked into that five-year fixed mortgage or that variable rate mortgage and the thought of purchasing that house. And we have what's called the lock-in effect, which means that people tend not to put their houses on the market. They tend to sit there and say, okay, let's ride this out and see what happens. And if things get substantially worse, you better believe we're gonna see a whole bunch of houses on the market. But if things stay about where they are right now, we're probably going to see not a lot of houses for sale in the next little while as buyers wait out the market. We actually saw this, interestingly enough, as an aside, in the Porsche market recently. Yes, there was a point in time where you could buy a 1970s, 1980s Porsche for about $15,000, $16,000. And in the last five years, prices on Porsches have gone through the roof. You will have a hard time finding a 90s or earlier Porsche for under $100,000. And basically what's happened is these cars are no longer going up significantly in price and the people who bought them at the high prices are going to have to hold on to them for a significant amount of time before they get to a point where they can sell them and either make money on them or at least not have a negative return. And that's what's going to happen in the Canadian real estate market. We're going to have a lot of people who hold on to houses for a long time because they don't want to sell them for less than what they bought them for and they don't want to have to pay a big penalty if they decide that they want to get out of that mortgage. Now that covers those buyers that purchased in 2020 or 2021. There's a good chance they're going to hold on to their properties and what they need to know is what their payments are going to be three, five years down the road. But what we're seeing right now is actually a really interesting effect with the people who purchased basically in January and February who are coming up on closings. And what we're seeing is a record amount of buyer's remorse in the Canadian real estate market. And what this is, is this is people who bought in those Vancouver and Toronto markets and purchased with the expectation that housing prices were going to go up and up and up. And they bought literally at the top of the market because what nobody expected was for the market to turn drastically in March as interest rates increased by almost a percent overnight, or at least in a 30 day period. And now what we're seeing is lawyers getting called and being asked to help people get out of contracts. And on the other side, we have sellers calling lawyers saying, hey, can you please help me make sure that my buyer closes on this property? Because those sellers who sold in January, February, March, 
March and are waiting on the possession dates to show up, they're in a position where if they had to sell their house today, they would probably have to sell it for less. And this is going to be a significant problem in the real estate market over the next two to three months. And here's the reality of it for a buyer is if you bought a property and you have a firm contract on that property, you have an obligation to purchase that house. And if you try to get out of it and the seller tries to sell the property, and they end up selling it for less, you're responsible for the difference between what they sold it to you for and what they ended up getting for it. And that can create a pretty significant amount of liability. Now, full disclosure here, I am not a lawyer. And if you are in a position where you are trying to get out of a real estate contract or you're trying to hold somebody to a real estate contract, you need to call a lawyer and not take a bunch of advice over the internet. But my understanding of it is that you are probably going to have a hard time getting out of a real estate contract if you are in one. And all of this has basically led to a reduction in consumer confidence across the board in Canadian real estate. So now buyers don't know if the house that they buy today is going to be worth significantly less tomorrow and sellers are concerned that if they sell their house, if the buyers are actually going to close on it. And that is a pretty significant issue for the Canadian real estate market. But I want to show you this because this is where it gets really interesting. This is the Nanos data portal. And what it shows is it shows consumer confidence in the real estate market. And specifically, it shows the percentage of people who think real estate prices are going to increase over the next year or two. Now, what I want to show you is really interesting because while this number is plunging at the moment, and it'll probably continue to go down, it still hasn't reached the levels that it was at pre-pandemic. And we're seeing a pretty significant amount of Canadians still think that their housing prices are going to go up. So what is happening here? Why is this the case? Why are certain Canadians still thinking that home prices are going to go up? Well, here's the reality of the situation. If you were in the Toronto or the Vancouver market and you saw a huge run up in prices, you're probably going to see a correction of some sort. But there's a whole bunch of other markets in Canada that have a significantly different path forward with respect to real estate. And if you look at the prairie markets, which are huge commodity markets right now, well, those economies are doing really, really well. And with interest rates just basically returning to normal, people are going back and getting into the real estate market and markets like Calgary and Edmonton and Saskatoon and Regina and Winnipeg are all feeling the benefits of a better commodity economy. And on top of that, we're seeing basically these two big markets that are affecting the national average home price, while the rest of Canada seems to be on pretty stable ground. And we see a lot of the time people point to the American market, the American real estate market, and how housing prices compared to incomes have gone up so insignificantly there compared to Canada. And here's the reality of it. We've got a significant amount of our population density in two major urban areas, Vancouver and Toronto. The US, on the other hand, has a very, very vast country with 10 times the amount of people, and they have their real estate dispersed across a larger area, and they have significantly more smaller cities, and therefore their national averages seem to be lower. But the reality of it is, is that the market in the US isn't significantly better than Canada's market, it's just more spread out. And if you go to areas like Manhattan or Los Angeles, or Seattle, what you will see is that those markets tend to operate very similarly to what Vancouver and Toronto do. It's all of the other cities across the US, the small cities like Nashville, the small cities like Denver, the small cities like Fort Collins, Colorado, which is even smaller than De Denver, that basically bring down the averages and make the American market look significantly better than the Canadian market. And while we have a supply issue because we have a significant number of immigrants coming into the country, we still have very affordable markets in different areas of Canada, especially if you look to those prairie provinces and those eastern provinces. Now, with all the uncertainty in this market, if you bought a home, you're obviously concerned about interest rates and you're concerned about prices coming down. But here's what you need to understand is that you need to have certainty around what the increases in interest rates look like, because for the majority of people, you aren't going to sell that house that you bought to live in anytime soon. And if the market goes down, you're probably going to hold on to the thing for as long as you can make the payments, especially if you have a significant amount of your money put into that property in the form of a down payment. So let's take a look at what payment increases would look like. So you have clarity on this and you can do this yourself. And I suggest that you do this yourself. You can go to the link in the description below. You can download the My Mortgage Toolbox app and you can go through and you can figure out exactly what your payments would be if interest rates were to go up. Now, I always calculate 
calculate this on a weekly basis. I also, by the way, budget on a weekly basis because it's a lot easier to break things into a seven day period than it is into a 30 day period and basically go through and look at what the difference would be on a weekly basis. So on a $500,000 mortgage, which is about the average mortgage in Canada. Yes, I know Vancouver and Toronto have higher home prices, blah, 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 blah. But the average mortgage in Canada is about 500,000 when you consider all the other markets. So you take this $500,000 mortgage and let's assume you have a 2.5% variable. Well, take a look at what would happen if interest rates were to go up by half a percent. Your payment goes from 608 to 643. So probably not something that a borrower who purchased a $500,000 plus property can't withstand. Now let's say they go up to three and a half percent. Well, now you're up to 666 or $60 a week more. And let's say they go up to 4% then you're up about $100 a week. And then if you go up to 4.5%, well, you're looking at about $120 more per week by having a 2% higher interest rate on your mortgage. So here's the reality of that. $120 per week for somebody who qualifies for a $500 mortgage is not something that is not manageable. And before you attack me here and you say, well, that's $480 a month, that's a lot. Think of it from the perspective of it's $120 per week. You can cut back on groceries. You can cut back on certain activities. Most people who qualify for a $500,000 mortgage can with certainty find $120 per week. And that scales up to a million dollar mortgage and it scales down to a $100,000 mortgage. People who legitimately qualified for their mortgages can assume that a 2% interest rate hike will be something that they can manage. Yes, the lifestyle is going to change, but it is with certainty manageable. It's not even debatable, it is manageable to withstand a 2% interest rate hike because, by the way, you probably qualified at 5% anyways. Now, you might have to cut some things out of your lifestyle, you might have to find a way to make some extra income, but this is with certainty something that is totally manageable. So before you freak out and list your house or start worrying about whether or not you're gonna make your payments, start looking at those little things every single week like your Starbucks habit that you could cut out if interest rates went higher and if you needed to. And I can guarantee you that every single one of us, assuming that we maintain our jobs and have the income that we said we had when we qualified for our mortgage, can make the increased payments that are coming with higher interest rates. It's just that simple. But the only way you can figure that out is get certain about what those payments will be if interest rates were to go up. And then from there, figure out where you can cut out your expenses. And by the way, if you're sitting here watching this and you have a car loan, the number one thing you can do in order to save yourself some money is sell that car, buy something more reasonable. You'd be amazed at what you can do with a pretty insignificantly priced car. And by the way, guess what? They've got four wheels, they've probably got better gas mileage, and it's probably a significantly better decision for you and your family to have a lower price vehicle than it is to have that $50,000 fully loaded Explorer or that $100,000 Escalade or whatever vehicle that it is you drive that is probably far more vehicle than you need and has an $800 or $900 a month payment. And by the way, most people have two of those $500 or $900 a month payments, especially those people that have $500,000 to $1 million houses. So the message here is get real clear on what higher interest rates mean to you. Don't panic. And if you found this video useful, do me that favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video. Don't forget about our race 25,000 subscribers and we'll see you on the very next one. Cheers.